This video will discuss the translational partition function of atoms and molecules in statistical mechanics. So for atoms and molecules, they can all freely displace their location in X, in Y, and in Z in Cartesian space. So we're going to use uh, the energy levels that come out of quantum mechanics for the translations of molecules to build a partition function for translational motion. So let's assume we have a particle. It has mass m, and it's inside some box. This box has dimensions of lx in the x dimension, ly in the y dimension, and lz in the z dimension. Now let's further assume that lx equals ly and lz. They're all the same. So the volume of this box is equal to lx times ly times lz, the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism, which is going to be equal to l cubed because we have, we have described this as a cube. All right, so what are the energy levels of this system inside of the particle inside a cube? So from the three-dimensional particle in a box model from the quantum mechanics playlist, the energy of this depends on three quantum numbers, nx, ny, and nz, and it's equal to Planck's constant squared divided by eight times the mass times the length of the box squared times the sum of these quantum numbers squared, nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared. So these quantum numbers nx, ny, and nz are equal to integers. They start at 1 and they go up to infinity. And the degeneracy of each energy level is 1. So each energy level is singly degenerate once we're considering uh, nx, and y, and nz. All right, so if we want to get our translational partition function, what we do is we sum over all the states of their Boltzmann factors times their degeneracies. The degeneracy is 1, so that's convenient. We don't have to worry about it. So the translational partition function is going to be a sum over all three quantum numbers. They're each independent from one another. Sum from nx equals 1 to infinity, ny equals 1 to infinity, and z equals 1 to infinity of the Boltzmann factor, e to the minus beta, which is 1 over kt, h squared over 8ml squared, nx squared plus ny squared plus nz squared. So e to the minus beta energy, e to the minus energy over kt. All right, so this is a rather complicated sum at the moment, but we can actually separate this into a function of x, a function of y, and a function of z. So our translational partition function is going to be the product of the partition functions in each individual dimension, x, y, and z. So if we focus on qx, that's where we're going to do the sum from nx equals 1 to infinity of e to the minus beta h squared over 8 ml squared nx squared. So we can approximate this as an integral from 0 to infinity over nx of e to the minus beta h squared over 8 ml squared times nx squared. So what this looks like is this looks like an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus alpha x squared dx, where alpha is beta h squared over 8 ml squared, and x equals nx. So that integral is equal to the square root of pi over 4 alpha. So in this case, qx, which is the same as qy and qz, since we've set these l's equal to one another, they're all going to have the same result, which is with alpha equals this, we're going to have that the, each individual dimension as a partition function of 2 pi m over beta h squared times L. So the translational partition function is going to be a product of those three that we separated out, which is equal to 2 pi m over beta h squared to the 3 halves times L cubed. But now that we've noticed, uh, we defined L cubed in the beginning to be the volume of the box, so we can make that V. Additionally, beta was equal to 1 over kT, so 1 over beta is kT. So our final translational partition function is 2 pi times the mass of the particle times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature divided by Planck's constant squared, all of that to the 3 halves power times the volume of the box. So this is the translational partition function for all atoms and molecules. This is going to be true for anywhere that we can approximate this sum as an integral. So this sum is going to be a, approximately this integral whenever the temperature is above zero 
and whether when there's a, a significant number of translational states occupied. Now, luckily for us, <clears throat> the separation in these energy levels is usually very small, so the Boltzmann, the relative Boltzmann factors are usually quite small. So there's usually an enormous number of states occupied at room temperature for atoms and molecules. So usually this integral is very, very accurate, and we don't have to worry about it. The only time we have to worry about it is when uh, the temperature is approaching absolute zero. So this is a very good partition function as long as T is above zero, and usually it's about uh, 15 Kelvin that we need to worry about the partition function deviating away from here. But other than that, for high temperatures, uh, especially things like 300 Kelvin, this is an extremely accurate value for the partition function for the translations of all atoms and molecules.